So an experiment was carried out to determine the percentage of iron in an iron salt, right? So what that means is that sometimes um, you go to the pharmacy and you buy an iron tablet. So you have a tablet here and the tablet, it might be, I just given you a figure here. It might, let's say be 20 milligrams, right? It might be a 20 milligram iron tablet, but really and truly, it is not actually 20 milligrams of iron inside it, right? For all you know, it might be 18 milligrams of actual iron that is inside it, right? So this is, a, this is an experiment. We are going to determine the percentage of iron in a sample in an iron salt, right? So here's what I, what's happening here. Oh, they told you the, the, um, the mass of the iron tablet. So it's 0 0.5. 0, 0 grams of a sample of iron salt is placed in a conical flask. Now, when you have experiments like this, please understand what's happening. This is my conical flask. You're going to put an iron tablet inside there. To it, you're adding 25 milliliters of sulfuric acid. So try to visualize what's happening here. And those of you who doing it privately, try to understand what's going on, right? So here we have 0 0.500 grams of my iron salt, right? So this is an iron salt. And what I'm adding to it is 25. So it's 25.0 milliliters of dilute sulfuric acid. So this is H2SO4. Sulfuric acid is being added, right? Um, right, so you're adding 25 mils of dilute sulfuric acid, you also added, right? So there's more things they add in here now. You're adding 10 milliliters of phosphoric acid. So that's H3PO4, right? And you're also adding eight drops of an indicator, right? So look at all the things you're adding to this. Eh? So you're adding eight drops indicator, right? Now you're reading the question a little bit by a little bit to make sure you understand what's happening. The contents of the flask were mixed and titrated against 0 0.2. So you're titrating this now against potassium dichromate until the end point was reached, right? And this is important here. They gave us a formula, right? You don't, you're not expected to learn off some of these formulas, right? They give you the formula here. So what is happening is that we are titrating. So the, there's a titration taking place between everything inside this here in this conical flask versus potassium dichromate. So K2, Cr2O7, right? That's my orange. So this is orange, right? So you're titrating this orange liquid with whatever is in that conical flask, right? That's all they told us so far. You all follow what, what they just said they did? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Right? So question one, try to break down question one. Question one could be a little difficult for you guys. So now let's see what they give us. Oh, okay. So now we, we have titration results here now. So it shows the burette readings of the initial and final volumes of each titration, right? So we've done a question like this in class. So they said list the apparatus that would be necessary to carry out this experiment. So all CXE trying to ask you in smart here is, here what? What do I need in order to perform this titration? Can anybody tell me what do I need? So you need a burette, a pipette. You need a burette, right? You're gonna need a, a pipette, yeah, what else? So the iodine. Iodine. Okay, never mind, never mind. So we do not titration here, right? I'm hoping that you all at least did a titration before. The only people who may not have done this um, would be um, those who do it privately, right? So here's what you need. You need to make sure you have a retort stand. Remember that's what holding up the burette, right? So you need a retort stand, you need a burette, you need a, a pipette. You might need a measuring cylinder because you need to measure the acid and those things, right? You need something to measure the mass of the tablet, 
So you need an electronic balance, right? And you may need a conical flask in order to perform the titration. So let's write down all the things that we need. So we need a retort stand. Right? You need a burette. You need a pipette. Right? Um, we need a conical flask, we said. Right? That's what we're going to remember. When you're doing the titration, you are mixing your mixture when you are adding things from the burette. So you need a conical flask to do it in. Right? Um, you might need a measuring cylinder. Right? Because if you notice any question, if you go back here, remember you added acid, you added 10, um, 25 mils of sulfuric acid, 10 mils of H3PO4. You need a measuring cylinder in order to do that. So a measuring cylinder. Right? And also we need to measure the mass of the tablet. So you need an electronic balance. So does this apparatus make sense? Yes, sir. Right? And it's two marks. So you just give any any two CX, you'll probably um, give you that anyway. Now, let's see what we're going to do here now. So we did a question like this in class before, right? This is one of the most popular types of questions you could get, right? So let me just, I want to bring the picture of the... Hold on, i just bring in the picture of the, um, the burette readings closer. So we can fill out the table, right? Um, and by the way, look at how much marks for this. Uh, this is I it, honestly, if you get something like this, <laughs> you should be happy, right? This is like nine marks just to follow this table, you know, nine marks just to follow this table. So let's let me get back my pen. So we have the first titration here, right? I want you all to look at the diagrams and tell me in this for this cell here. What value am I going to put there? What is my final volume? The 21.95. 21.95 songs about right to me. Same thing. 21 point, let's see. Um, yeah, that's 21.95, right? So what you're going to put, that's, that's my final. So you're going to put 20. 1.95. Look at, you get nine marks just for reading all these burette readings, you know, right? Those of you who are doing it privately, when you do the titration, you are actually looking at the burette. So what they've done here, they've given you pictures of what it's looking like, right? What is my initial volume in this case here? What am I going to put in the next cell? So would that be two? Right, but remember, always give your values to two decimal places, right? So it'll be 2.00. So this here is going to be 2.00, right? And what you're going to do, the volume of solution used, we just need to subtract those two, right? And when you subtract that, this is going to be nine, five, and this is going to be what? 19, 19.95, right? So that's three marks again, just for that there. Next titration now, we're looking at the second titration. What is my final volume? When you all read it off, what you get in there? Yes, 21.85. 21.85. Yes, that's all in right to me. Make sure everybody can read that at 21.85. What, what is the initial volume in that case there? 21.85. One point eight five, yeah. One point eight five. So this here is one point eight five. And when we subtract this, we're gonna get twenty point zero zero. Right? Let's talk about the third titration now. What does that read in there on that bureau? 19.5. Yep, 
Zero. And what is my initial reader? 1.5. 1 1.5. 1.50. Right? When you subtract this, you're going to get 18.00. And look at that. You just get nine marks here just for reading off some beautiful readings. That's it. Right? So if you get a question like this, you should be smiling in the exam. Man. Right? So those of you doing privately, please pay attention to these types of questions because those are the things you can actually get in the exam. Now let's see what do they want us to do now. They said using an asterisk to indicate the titration data that should be used to obtain the average titration volume of the potassium dichromate used in the experiment. So when you do a titration, Right? The first titration is what we call our rough, just to gauge where is the end point of the reaction. Right? Um, when you look at the data, you're going to have to select which ones of the data you're going to use. So let me ask you all something. We got 19.95, we got 20, and we got 80. Which set of data am I going to use in order to find my average value? Which data am I going to use? 19.95 and 20. Yep. Yeah, on volume of solution, you sir? Yeah. All those values? Well, you're not going to use all the values because the first one is 19.95, right? The second one is 20.00, but the last one is 18. That 18 kind of off by almost 2 cm cube. So something is wrong with that, that final titration that it did, right? So what you're going to do, they said, um, now remember, usually when we do a titration, we need to find our titration so that they only differ by about 0.1, right? Plus or minus 0.1. So what we would do, so let me show you exactly what you're gonna have to do for this one, eh? right? And this is not the first time we've done one like this. So let's go back here. Did I said using an asterisk, indicate the titration data that should be used. So the ones we're gonna use, this is 19.95 and this is 20. So I am going to use this value here and I'm going to use this value here. I am not going to use the last one because 18, the difference between 18 and 20 is 2 cm cube. That's too much. What we are looking for is what I call tighter values that differ by plus or minus 0 0.1, right? CXE specifically says this is how we're going to check it. So we're looking for values that only differ by about 0.1. So I can use titration one and titration three, I'm sorry, two, but not the third one, right? So when they come and they ask you, right? So one mark just for doing that, hence calculate the average volume. So average volume of potassium dichromate right, is equal to, so what we're going to do, we're going to take those two values, the 19.95 and the 20. So this is 19.95 plus 20.00, and we're going to divide it by two, right, because you're finding the average value. And that's going to give me, what, 19.95 plus 20. And what we're going to get there is 19.975, right, but the value we're going to use, because we're only going up to two decimal places, it'll be 19.98, right? That's what we're going to use in our calculations, 19.98. So 19.98 cm cube. You all have so far? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so, so far, what do we have to do? We... Right, so is this so two marks for this as nine, as 11, 12, that's 14 marks already gone there, right? This question is worth 25 marks. Now, using the information in C, calculate the average number of moles of potassium dichromate used in the experiment. Now, we know what volume of um, potassium dichromate we're using, it's 19.98 cm cube, right? So let's just put that somewhere here, so we, we need that. 19.98 cm cube. That's how much potassium dichromate we use. If we want to figure out moles, they had to tell us something about concentration. So let's go back to the beginning of the question. 
Yes, they did. They told us the concentration of the potassium dichromate was 0 0.020. That's this figure here. You see that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now we had to make use of that 0 0.020. So the concentration is 0 0.020 mole per dm cube, right? So to get the average number of moles, we're going to have to say 1000 cm cube of, I'm not going to write all the whole word, so it's K2CR207, 1000 cm cube of potassium nichromate contains how much moles? 0 0.020. 0 0.020. 0 0.020 moles, right? We got that information based on this figure. That's what that's telling me. So therefore, and this is what we actually use in the calculation. It's 19.98. So it's 19.98 cm cube of K2CR207 contains and we cross multiply. We're going to say 19.98 multiplied by 0 0.020 divided by 1000. And that is going to give me 0.020. Right? I'm getting a, a really small number here, right? So I'm going to have to put my answer in standard form. So it's going to be 3.996 by 10 to the minus 4. So that's what I'm going to put. It's going to be 3.996 by 10 to the minus 4 moles. Please use your calculator and make sure you get to that same yeah. answer that I have. Same answer, sir. Right. <laughs> so one mark just for that, eh? Now, lots of students who do chemistry, they have real problems when it comes to moles. They want to avoid it like the plague, but you have to be able to do these things, right? So all I did, I used the concentration they gave me for the potassium dichromate as the 0.02, and we know the volume of potassium dichromate that we use. Now, the next part now, from the equation on page four, determine the number of moles of iron ions that will react with one mole of potassium dichromate. So that's the first equation they gave us here, that's this. From this equation, how many moles of iron reacts with one mole of potassium dichromate, according to that equation? How many moles of iron reacts with the potassium dichromate? The answer is right there. Nobody? So just repeat that one more time. The question asks, go back to the question. Question wants to know from the equation, <coughs> from the equation, <coughs> determine the number of moles of iron ions, that's actually two plus ions, that react with one mole of dichromate ions. Six moles. The answer is six, it's right here. Look at right here. According to this equation, one mole of the potassium dichromate reacts with six, right? Guys, this is something basic that you all should know, right? And you all write an exam in about three and a half months. So one mole of potassium dichromate reacts with six moles. It's right there in the equation, right? That's where this number here, that's what that is telling me. So determine the number of moles of iron ions that will react with one mole. So the answer is simply, so you're going to just say, you can just write six as the answer, or you can say um, one mole, right? CR207 to minus reacts with six moles Fe2 plus, right? So the next part now, 
They said calculate the number of moles of iron in the iron sam salt sample. Now, let's go back a step here. So we know how much potassium dichromate we use in the titration, right? That's this figure here, right? We know what the mole ratio is. One mole of the potassium dichromate is going to react with six moles of iron, right? And this part is asking, calculate the number of moles of iron in the sample, right? So this is what we know. We know one mole, Fe2+, plus, that's from the answer before, reacts with six moles, Cr2O7 to minus. Right, we, that's the answer from from before. Right, um, that's now. I need to rewrite the equation because I want to figure out. I wrote it wrong side. Let's write it the next way, because you want to figure out the amount of moles of iron. Iron needs to be on the right hand side. So what you're gonna say there is um, one mole of the Cr two O seven to minus. One mole of the CR272 minus reacts with six moles Fe2 plus, right? Therefore, how much moles of potassium dichromate we had? How many moles of potassium dichromate did we have in this experiment? Uh, Angel, how many moles of potassium dichromate did we use in this experiment? Sorry, 3.996 and 10 to the Yep, 3.996 is the answer right here. We just worked that out. 3.996 by 10 to the minus four. So therefore, 3.99, oh, just now. Nine, nine, six by 10 to the minus four moles, right? CR207 to minus reacts with Right, and we're gonna cross multiply. So this is 3.996 by 10 to the minus four, multiply by six, divided by one, and let's work that out. And what we're gonna get here is 2.2.39 2.398, we can work with that, 2.398. So this is gonna give me 2.398 by 10 to the minus one, two. Right? Is that making sense, everybody, or you're all totally lost? Yes, sir. I making sense, sir. Right? So what you just worked out there, you worked out how much moles of um, Fe2 plus you had any iron salt. That's what you just did. The next part now, they want us to calculate the mass of iron in the iron salt sample. Right? Now, they gave you the mass of one mole of iron. It is 55.8. So to work out the actual mass of the iron in the salt tablet, right? What you need to do, you need to say one mole, right? Of iron, Fe, right? Has a mass of 55.8 grams, right? So that's the molar mass of iron. Therefore, all we need to do is to take this figure, this answer that we just got here, the 2.398 by 10 to the minus three moles, 
right, of Fe has a mass of, and we're going to cross multiply here again. So that's 2.398, 2.398 by 10 to the minus three, right? Multiply by 55.8. Well, one, and that's going to give me 0 0.1, 1.134, right? That's what I get them for the answer, 0 0.134. So, so if they're on mass, but the potassium now, like how you the, um, the moles of the potassium, 3.96 by 10 to the minus four, if you're mess up from the, then F and G will be wrong for the, Right, so how so CXC corrects, and this applies to all subjects, there's something called error carried forward. So if you make a mistake early in the question, but your process of working the answer is correct, right, they will still give you the mark. So you might only lose mark for higher up where you actually made a mistake. Right, but when you're doing some of these more calculations, the answers from before are important. They impact on your, on your final answer. No, where are we? So, we don't get lost, right? So H, so now they want to calculate the percentage of iron in the salt sample. So based on the titration alone, right? We just figured out that the amount of actual iron in the sample is 0 0.134, right? So this is my mass of iron that is actually present. Mass of iron right, is equal to 0 0.134 grams. So let's go back and see what is the mass of the tablet. Right. So let's go back to the beginning of the question. And the beginning of the question, they said 0.5 grams of the sample Right, so it's as iron salt and the mass is 0 0.5 grams, 0 0.500 0 grams. So mass of this is 0 0.500 grams, right? So you realize the tablet is 0.5, but the actual iron that is there is less than that, right? Actual iron is less than that. So they want the percentage of iron in that sample, right? So all you're gonna do is take the 0.134 and divide it by 0.5 and multiply by 100, right? So let's do that. So percentage of iron, right? Is gonna be equal to, all you have is 0 0.134. You're gonna divide that by 0 0.500 cause that's the total mass of the tablet, multiply by 100%. Right? When you work this out, you're going to get as 0 0.134 divided by 0 0.5 multiplied by 100. And that gives me 26.8%. Right. Now, one of the things, I mean, there's a finite amount of questions here you could bring, right? You see the question one in the chemistry paper. Some of these questions, they repeat, they just change the numbers, but it's the same basic question that you get. The calculation is exactly the same. So this is not the first time this I've seen this question, right? Um, so I think there was one I worked, I think it was with the form four class and the percentage was like 80% or something so. So the percentage, right, will change. That's all they change in any question, but the exact calculations for the question, right? Um, so any question about how we got that percentage? No, sir. No, sir. Right now, when we do these questions, please, please, please go back, make sure you understand why I did certain things to work these things out. Right now, let's see if we can answer the rest of the question. Right, so the reaction between iron and dichromate is considered a reduction oxidation reaction. Define the term reduction in terms of electrons. Let me see what you all remember. What is reduction? Um, so reduction can be defined as the gain of electrons. Yep. Reduction and oxidation can be defined in about three to four different ways, right? And what they want here, reduction is simply the gain of electrons. That's all they want, 
reduction is the gain of electrons, right? So you're gonna put that. So reduction is the gain of electrons. Right? So that's my answer here. Reduction is gain of electrons. Next part. In the reaction, Fe2 plus is acting as the reducing agent. Question is asking now, here what? What is a reducing agent? What is a reducing agent? So a reducing agent is um um uh, sorry no. So there are several ways or several things we can see, right? A reducing agent will reduce something, right? A reducing agent is going to reduce something, but we might need to say a little more in order to get him up, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to see um, a reducing agent. agent reduces a substance, right? And is oxidized in the process, right? So a reducing agent, it reduces something, but at the same time it is oxidized in the process, right? Right? Um, you can say, no, you just need to put this on your game marks, right? But you can also say, if you want to show them that you know what you're talking about, the oxidation or its oxidation state decreases, right? So any, any, anything that sounds like that, you're going to get it marks through. Right, so I saw Emma put that, so it reduces something, right? But at the same time, it is oxidized. Well, we've done this in class, right? Many times, calculate the oxidation state of chromium. Without calculating it, what's the oxidation state for chromium here? What is the oxidation state for chromium? Plus three. Plus mm, plus plus six then. It should be plus six, right? Cr two or seven. The answer is plus six. But let me show you how you're working it out. So you're working out chromium. So we don't know what it is. Assume you don't know what it is. So we're gonna call it x. So you have two chromium there. So it's gonna be two x plus. You have seven oxygen, right? So that is seven multiplied by the oxidation number for oxygen. Oxidation number for oxygen is taken as minus two. And you're going to put all of that equal to my charge here, which is minus two. So this is minus two. So all we're going to do now, we're going to solve this. So 2x minus 14 is equal to minus two. So 2x is equal to minus two plus 14. So 2x is equal to 12. Come across here. So therefore, x is equal to 12 divided by two. So therefore X is equal to plus six, right? That's my working for it. The oxidation number here is plus six. So that's what CXC wants, eh? They want that exact calculation that I just did there. That's what they want, right? And the last part, they want state one precaution that should be taken when carrying out this experiment. One precaution. What can you all see as a precaution? Last week we did a question where they asked us for precautions as well. You are to read it should be right at eye level. Uh-huh. To avoid parallax error. Right. What else? We have a good few things we can say about this. What about wearing safety goggles, gloves, lab coat, those things? That's important. Yeah, 
Yeah, so wearing safety goggles, gloves, lab coats. Um, you need to read your burette at eye level. You need to make sure that your burette is vertical, right? So if you all ever worked in a lab already, when you put your, your burette up like this, right? You need to adjust it so that it's vertical, not slanted like this because you're gonna get wrong readings, right? So your burette needs to be vertical, right? Um, some students, when they're doing a titration, they put a white tile under the conical flask to make sure they can see the color, right? That's a precaution you could use, right? Um, the next thing you, you could do when you're doing a um, titration, let's say you're putting the potassium dichromate in the burette. What you will do is rinse the burette first with the potassium dichromate, right? Um, in the case of the pipette, you could rinse it first with the solution that you're going to use, right? Um, the next thing is when you're doing the titration, make sure you swirl the conical flask while you're doing the titration so you get proper mixing. Right, that's an extra precaution you could use. Um, when you are measuring the volume of the potassium dichromate in the burette, right, make sure you have no air bubbles. Now, I don't know if you all like had sufficient practice in the lab, but when you fill that burette, what you need to do is to make sure turn on the top of the burette first to ensure that all air bubbles come out of the burette, right? That's something that yes, you need sir. to do, right. Um, there are practicals with burette. So I think I did six practicals with burette and things. So. Right. So practice and next and reflection and things. So I have a lot to write up. So. <laughs> all right. So all of those are precautions that we can use, right? And there's only one mark they want here. So to tell you the truth, anything you put that makes sense, you're going to get a mark. So use um, goggles. Right, lab coats. Right, um, ensure to read be right at eye level. Right, use a white tile. Any any one of those things will work. Right, I'm not gonna put on all of them. Right, because only one they want. Um, right, so any one of those, and that's it, that's 25 marks.